tonight on U Central News. Breaking news just hours ago, the House finally has a speaker. Representative Mike Johnson of Florida won unanimously what one Oklahoma representative is saying about the new speaker. New from overseas, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency warns that the humanitarian crisis in Gaza will intensify due to the fuel shortage, what they are asking for at this hour. Next tonight, Hollywood superstars have band together to send a thank you letter to President Biden and asking him to keep his eyes focused on the situation. Which celebrity signed it? Jules Black has the answer. And finally, last night marked the start of the 2023 NBA season. Ray Robinson has the full rundown of how the first couple of games went. All of this and more happening now on U Central News. Live from Central Oklahoma, this is U Central News. Good evening, I'm Mark Lowe. And I'm Emma Birch. Welcome to this edition of U Central News. Earlier today, GOP representatives united to elect the new Speaker of the House, Republican Mike Johnson of Louisiana. In their tallies, that the total number of votes cast is 429, of which the Honorable Mike Johnson of the state of Louisiana has re received 220 votes. This this comes more than three weeks after the House ousted former Speaker Kevin McCarthy. The chamber has been without a leader since then. Johnson's victory comes after three other candidates failed to get the needed vote since McCarthy was kicked out. As former chairman of the Republican Study Committee, he played a key role in the failed efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Johnson got unanimous support from all Republican representatives on the vote. This came after Oklahoma Representative Kevin Hearn dropped out of the race and voiced his support for Johnson. So I want everyone to know that this race has gotten to a point where it's kind of gotten crazy. This is a, more about people right now than it should be. This should be about America, America's greatness. And for that, I stepped aside and threw all my support behind Mike Johnson. I think he'd make a great speaker. He's a great human being. he would be a person that everybody can trust and that will lead this great conference forward to do the things we need to do in the Republican Party, get the Congress open back up, and do the things we need to do. In international news, the UN Relief and Works Agency is warning it will be forced to halt its operations in Gaza in the coming hours if fuel is not delivered, intensifying an already grave humanitarian crisis. Tamar Al Rifa, a spokesperson for the organization, has more on the issue. We're probably talking a day. We had already warned that if fuel runs out by tonight or tomorrow, we at UNRWA, the largest UN agency in Gaza, will no longer be able to work. And when I say work, we are talking about over 600,000 people in our shelters and our school that who expect to receive clean drinking water from our water desalination plant, who expect to receive bread that is baked in bakeries. All of these need fuel to be able to operate in addition to the fuel needed for the trucks that go all the way to the Egyptian border to get the supplies that are coming in from Egypt. Aid facilities run by the United Nations Relief and Works Agency in Gaza will likely be unable to operate within a day if the fuel is not delivered, Al Farifa told CNN's Max Foster earlier today. Israel officials have stated that fuel is not being permitted into Gaza due to concerns that it will end up with Hamas. And as the United States continues to provide aid, a handful of Ukrainian pilots are in Arizona learning how to fly F-16s. It's a part of the international training program the Arizona National Guard operates. Before heading to Arizona, the pilots spent time in San Antonio learning English. Defense officials say won't say how many pilots are involved, only identifying them as a, quote, small number. The training is expected to last several months. The U.S. is also planning to train about 200 Ukrainians on how to maintain the plane. The training is under the, under the direction of Biden administration to help Ukraine in its war with Russia. And I know outside, it's kind of cloudy, it's starting to rain. You said you were outside, you came back in. Was it raining? Yeah, so about 30 minutes ago, I was walking back to my dorm to get changed into this for this mm -hmm. newscast. And on the way back, I started to feel some raindrops on me. And I was looking around, it looked like there was a storm cloud out there. But huh. I guess we'll go to Destiny Pittman now to see, is there any rain out there, Destiny? 
Yes, there is going to be some rain coming in this evening. Outside, it is very, very cloudy. That's where those rainstorms are coming from. Um, and it is very humid as well. The humidity rate is about 76%. And because of this, it does feel like it's about 77 degrees outside. On top of that, it is also very windy. The winds are blowing south at 24 miles per hour. And there are some gusts of winds that are even stronger, up to 33 miles per per hour and then moving on to tonight tonight there is going to be some more rain that rain's going to get a little, a little heavier and there is going to be a chance of some storm tonight the winds are going to slow down just a little though they're going to be blowing south at about 8 to 15 miles per hour with those gusts of winds being about 23 miles per hour the humidity rate will stay really high at about 76 percent though and then there is like that 80 percent chance of rain like i said today and it's going to get about down to about 65 degrees tonight so a little cooler than um, what it was today but that is all i have for now back to you guys at the desk thank you destiny well with halloween being next week a lot of people including myself are looking forward to christmas which isn't too much the uc and uc has a great way for students faculty and staff to get in the spirit the President's Club Children's Community Party, or PCCCP, brings around 250 elementary students on campus to make crafts, play games, get gifts, and meet Santa. But they are in need of sponsors for these kids. PCCCP is an annual holiday tradition here on campus where students, faculty, and staff can apply to sponsor a kid for Christmas, and you can select an item off their wish list, and they can come on campus and you spend the day with them. And if you would like to sponsor a child, you and a friend can apply through UCOR or find their Instagram for the link in the bio. Applications in this Friday, the 27th at midnight. And one of our very own mass communications professors, Mark Cannabit, was named Teacher of the Year by the Society of Professional Journalists. This award is given to an individual that educates, motivates, and inspires students in the classroom. The Society of Professional Journalists in the nation's most broad-based journalism organization. Hannibal has taught at UCO since 1987 and has been a crucial part of UCO's mass communications student education. Congratulations. And a Greek like organization could be making a return to campus. I spoke with different fraternity and sorority members to get their thoughts on the potential return of Kappa Sigma to UCO. UCO has had a Greek life presence for more than 50 years, and since then, many different fraternities and sororities have had chapters on campus. One of those organizations is the Kappa Sigma fraternity, who up until 2016 had a big presence on campus. One interested member says that coming back to campus is something he is excited about. I think coming back to campus, um, it really opens opp opportunity for people to be a part of something that's bigger than themselves. Um, it definitely uh, is something that will benefit in the long run with, uh, you know, networking, uh, job opportunities, and, you know, the friends that you could have, you know, for a lifetime. The fraternity was kicked off UCO's campus back in 2015 due to a hazing incident, but they look to clean up their reputation and get it right this time around. The idea of Kappa Sigma returning to campus seems like a great idea for some members of other fraternities and sororities. I don't think it's a bad thing. Tri Sigma used to be on campus and we, we just came back again in 2016, so. I think it's a good new way to connect to like other people, to maybe like get different people into Greek life that are not that interested so far and to just like keep connecting, have maybe have a good rivalry in the intramurals. And I think it's going to be fun. If you are interested in joining a fraternity or sorority, all you need to do is search for Greek Life on the UCO website and follow the windows to see what options are available to you. From Edmond, for U Central News, I'm Mark Lowe. And a Category 5 hurricane is sweeping through Mexico. Hurricane Otis has winds of around 270 kilometers per hour with the center of the storm about 45 miles south-southeast of Alcapulco. It is currently the strongest storm to strike the Pacific coastline of Mexico. And we don't have those kind of winds here Thankfully. in the Edmond area. Thankfully, <laughs> yeah. we come close a few times, I feel yeah. like. But we are definitely starting to get some rain out there. Destiny yes. Pimmon will have our full first look at weather when we come back. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Make a wish. Miss you guys. Blue skies, smiling at me. Talking about blue skies, do I see? When it comes to making plans, you are the best. What about those barbecues you plan in detail for your family? Or your daughter's first costume party? It was out of this world. 
The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Are you really sure this is all going to fit? <laughs> oh, it'll fit. I got that. All right. When hauling anything, ensure it's secure. Losing your load is dangerous for all drivers. We want everyone to make it home safe. Help make Oklahoma safe by securing your load. Welcome back, everyone. I'm just going to give you your statewide look for the weather for tonight. We're just going to start up in the Panhandle, so up in the Guymond area. It's going to be about 48 degrees tonight. That's going to be the coolest part of the state. We're mainly in about some high 50s to low, six, low to mid 60s. And then over in Woodward, that's where we get to the 50s area, 57, 59 in Clinton and Altus, and then 64 in Lawton and Ardmore. And then in this Oklahoma City and Edmond area, it's going to be about 65 degrees tonight and then moving over we can see that in McAllister tonight it's going to be about 66 degrees 68 in Idabel one of the warmer parts of the state tonight and then 66 up in Tulsa and then up in Ponca City and Miami both again the 60s 63 Ponca City 65 Miami and I'm just going to move on to our seven day forecast so today was a little gray day it's about 74 degrees currently with a low of 65 which will reach tonight and then moving on to tomorrow. So tomorrow is going to be another gray day. There just won't be any rain as much as we've been seeing earlier on in this week. The temperature will go up a little. It's going to be about 79 degrees tomorrow with a low of 60. And then moving on to this weekend, we're going to have a pretty stormy weekend. That rain is going to start back up again tomorrow on or in a few days on Friday. High of 70, low of 47. This is when we start seeing those really low, low temperatures. So those are going to be a 20% chance of those storms on Friday. And then moving on to Saturday, that's when we're going to get start seeing some thunderstorms and the even cooler temperatures. This is where the weather starts getting really, really cool compared to what we have been seeing. So we see there's a 70% chance of those thunderstorms on Saturday with a high of 56 and then a low of 35. And then on Sunday, again, another rainy day. 70% chance of some more storms, 41 for the high, which is that's the lowest we're going to be the lowest we'll see, and then 30 for the low. And then moving on to next week, we see Monday and Tuesday are both going to be sunnier days, but the temperatures are going to be really cold. So we see a high of 46 on Monday with a low of 29. So our lowest temperatures are going to be getting below freezing starting next week. And then on Tuesday, a high of 49. So I know that I'm excited for this colder, grayer, like rainy weather. I just know that days like this make me want to stay inside and watch a movie. Mark, Emma, what are some things you guys like to do on a day that are like this, that are nice and like gray outside? I like to stay in my room, watch TV under blankets, and just be warm. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a very similar boat, you know. Yeah. I like to just take it easy, relax, nice blanket. It puts you in like a sleepy mood. It does. It really does. These are the days I like to take a nap on. Yes. And I rarely take naps, so that's saying a lot, you know. And with all this cold weather coming, I'm really going to need to grab all my blankets out for, for next sure. week. Get a cup of hot chocolate going. Yes. It is that time of the season, yes. and I'm ready for it. <laughs> yes. After the break, why are celebrities sending letters to the president? And Apple users get ready for another update. What features are coming with it? Joel Black has this and more coming up. I was raised to believe in the power of possibility, to always move forward, but never forget where I came from, to value hard work, ingenuity, and hospitality. On one hand, my people are rough and rugged. On the other, refined and elegant. 
They taught me how to love beautiful things and cherish my past, to seek out adventure, eat well, and to have a good time. So I keep their traditions alive every place I go. They call me Oklahoma City, but you can call me the modern frontier. Youth Century News as a whole, you got to be in those different areas, like being on camera, being off camera, being in the control room. And so I feel like that is what prepared me most about being in the workplace. Youth Central and the Mass Comm Department has provided me all the tools and the fundamentals that are needed in order to thrive well and thrive fast at my job. Maybe it's time to hit the road and visit a place where stories unfold. This is the land of the ultimate road trip with sights old and new on Route 66. There's fun to be had, so much to do, and a few new surprises before you get through. Oklahoma has the most miles to share of Route 66. It's really quite rare. TravelOK.com will show you the way. Come see for yourself this iconic highway. Happy Wednesday, UCO family. I'm here to bring you your social media updates today. Over 100 celebrities, including many A-listers, have signed an open letter to President Joe Biden regarding the Hamas hostages. The campaign is called No Hostage Left Behind, and some of the celebrities include Jack Black, Lana Del Rey, Tyler Perry, and Bradley Cooper. The letter has striked controversy among social media users about the apparent support for Israel. And for you Apple users, another update is heading your way. The iOS 17.1 is now available for iPhone users. The update will include the ability to airdrop over the internet, even outside the airdrop range. It will also update Apple Music and provide a few bug fixes. And Kim Kardashian's iconic Skims line is branching out to men's underwear. Nick Bosa, Neymar Jr., and Shay Gildas Alexander are the models and first faces for Skims' new men's line. Social media users are definitely not complaining about the new promo videos and pictures that have released. The Skims line will be launching tomorrow. And Ticketmaster is back at it again with Bad Bunny's most wanted tour coming up. Fans are frustrated with the price of tickets. Cursing Ticketmaster has become the norm as we've seen the same complaints with the Taylor Swift concert. The tickets this time are ranging around $400 to almost $2,000. Bad Bunny fans, you better be saving up if you want to get a good view. That's all I have for your social media updates today. Back to you at the desk. Thank you, Jules. UCO's volleyball team is still on a roll after their Tuesday night matchup. And NBA opening day was last night. U Central's Ray Robinson has all the info on the games played and the Thunder's opening night coming up on U Central Sports. Stay with me. <laughs> Feel the beat of nature at a park or forest near you. Find a forest and music inspired by nature at discovertheforest.org. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed.
Welcome to U Central Sports. I'm Ray Robinson, and here is your Wednesday sports update. The UCO volleyball team just had their 14th conference game of the season. They were on the road against Newman. Now, with this many games in, along with an early week game on the road, you might ask yourself, was there some fatigue? And if it was, it most certainly wasn't on display at last night's game. They swept Newman in convincing fashion. They advanced their winning streak to eight straight with 12 in a two conference record. Junior Addison Wimmer led the way with eight kills. Later on this week, they take on Missouri Southern this Friday at 6 p.m. This team is on a four-game losing streak, so the Broncos definitely don't want to walk into this game so lightly. And we are narrowing towards the end of the soccer season for our Lady Broncos. The recent game saw them go down in, in Emporia. Last Sunday at home, they put up a fight towards the end of the game with one lone goal from Amaya Grace. But it wasn't enough as Emporia had created some wiggle room in the second series with just two. They will have the last set of games this weekend as they take on Roger State this Friday at 7 p.m. And the final opportunity to end this season on a good note will be on Sunday as they take on Newman at Tom Thompson Field at 1 p.m. And guys, the NBA is back. Opening night was last night, and the NBA showcased some of their premier stars of the league. Nikola Jokic, along with the Denver Nuggets, received their rings along with the banner to go up in the rafters at the Mile High City. What followed was a decent matchup against their Western Conference Finals opponents, LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers. The Nuggets showed that championship fatigue is not an issue as they took care of business against the Lakers 107 to 119, all Denver starters scoring in the double digits. Nikola Jokic begins his 2023 to 24 season campaign with a triple double. As he continues to climb up the ranks in an all-time triple-double, he is just one shy of LeBron James and Jason Kidd's fourth spot in all-time triple-double. The second game of opening night saw the newly shaped Phoenix Suns take on Golden State Warriors. Bradley Beal and Draymond Green did not take the court for their respective teams, but it still made for a good game. Phoenix pulls off this close one by beating Golden State 104-108. to And guys, to some breaking news, the NBA All-Star Game will be transitioning back to their Western versus Eastern Conference format. So it's safe to say that Shea Gilgis Alexander of the Oklahoma City Thunder, you'll have a good idea of what team he'll be playing for. And speaking of the NBA, this wouldn't be any relevant if we didn't mention the Oklahoma City Thunder. They begin their season today. They will be in the Windy City to take on the Chicago Bulls tonight. As of now, Jalen Williams, Kendrick Williams will be out tonight. But we should still be in for some good basketball. Now, Mark and Emma, you know, this is, uh, we're still in the middle of the rebuild. You know, this ain't really as exciting as it's been, you know, for me being a Thunder fan for these last 10, 15 years. You know, like there's no real excitement because, you know, there's not the expectations aren't as high as they've been. So what is you guys' expectations for the Thunder? I'm excited. We're young. We got a lot of energy. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm ready. We're going to win tonight. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> I, I agree with Emma. I think I'm kind of in the same boat with you too, right? The last couple of years just haven't been anything really to write home about, except last year showed a lot of promise. And mm -hmm. this year, especially with a bunch of new starters coming in, like Chad Holmgren, who was supposed to play last year and then got injured. I think we're going to see some big improvements this year. Definitely. And I'm definitely expecting us to make a good playoff run. I'm very, very excited. It should be a great one. Coming up, UCO sponsors an alternative spring break. And a bear gets trapped in the most unusual place. We'll tell you all about that when we come back. Feel the beat of nature at a park or forest near you. Find a forest and music inspired by nature at discovertheforest.org. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed.
Welcome back. UCO's alternative spring break trips provide a week-long service experience surrounding critical social topics. Three trips will be offered during UCO spring break March 16th through the 23rd. The application deadline is tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. Full trip descriptions, free trip requirements, and trip costs can be found in each trip's application. And speaking of trips, you know, fall break just happened. Yes. We're starting to get more fall weather out yes. there. I'm definitely looking forward to it, Emma. How about you? I'm, lo I'm not looking for the 40s coming up. Destiny, what do we got? So, yes, we are starting to see those cooler temperatures come in. And then I'm just going to give you guys your forecast for the rest of today leading in to tomorrow morning. So, like I said earlier, tonight we are going to have some, right now we have that light rain coming in and it's going to progress into some storms tonight, getting to about 65 degrees tomorrow. And just remember there are going to be some thunderstorms tonight, so if you are going to be out, just make sure to be safe and aware of your situations as, as well as having either an umbrella or a raincoat because we will be getting some heavy rains starting tonight. But then tomorrow, the temperature is going to go back up to about 79, but don't get too used to it because those cold weathers are coming in. So enjoy those high 70s for the last time we'll see for a while. And it is going to be a little sunny tomorrow, so nothing like we've seen today, but there will be some clouds in the sky. And then these are just some important things to keep in mind tonight as you're going in the ne next few days as you're going to be out and about. Like I said, there are going to be some thunderstorms tonight, Friday, and Saturday. So just make sure that you are aware of your situations and make sure you are safe if you're going to be outside. And then lastly, we are under a flood watch currently, but that flood watch will end tomorrow, October 26th at about 1 p.m. And that's all I have for now. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Destiny. Check this out. A minivan owner in North Carolina finds an unusual surprise. Somebody's been sleeping in my van. Instead of Goldilocks, it was Door Locks and the Bears, the story of a mama bear and her cubs who became trapped inside a family van in rural North Carolina. Police arrived and confirmed the bear brood was indeed barred, then used tugging tactics from a safe distance to open the door. Once the 250-pound mama was freed, she didn't go far, waiting and watching vigilantly as authorities coaxed the remaining cubs from the vehicle. The furry fairy tale had a happy ending as the whole fuzzy fam family reunited on their way back into the wild. Well, I know that if... I understand why the bears got in there. It was a Chrysler Pacifica, which is my dream car. So I understand I, why they jumped in there. I honestly thought that was a fake bear at first, <laughs> seeing it just from that video. It reminded me of like that one from a, a couple months ago. It was the like China a, one? Yes, yes. yes like the... It was like a They're fake bear. Real. Everybody thought it was like a bear in a or a man in a bear costume. Yes, I remember so that. It weird. went viral. Oh my god. But goodness, I understand that Chrysler Pacifica, that's my dream mom car. <laughs> I want one so bad. It's it a good is, car. It is a nice car, and apparently the bears think the same way. They have good taste. They do. That is unfortunately all the time we have today. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition of U Central News. Signing off for now, I'm Mark Lowe. And I'm Emma Birch. Have a great night.